Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to do a special uh, NHL DFS preview for this evening. Uh, not so much of a preview as it is, I guess, a process video of how we go about building lineups. And we're going to use uh, tonight's big uh, GPP as uh, as the uh, the canvas, so to speak. Um, it's the 555 tonight, which is uh, not it's very rare. And we're going to build lineups for that. And we're also going to build the lineups for the MME contest as well. And again, the purpose of this is, yes, to give you an idea of who I like tonight, whatever, or who the projections like and whatever. But it, it's more to continue to teach you guys how to build lineups uh, on other days. So, you know, you have all these great tools at your disposal, whether it be good projections and Saber Sim to build lineups and to do contest sims and just to continue to develop um, the best ways to use these tools. So we're going to go through it. We're going to go, I don't know, we'll, we'll take se several different looks at it. First of all, let's get the right sport up. Um, we're going to look at our sheets. We're going to look at our stack tools. Then we're going to build lineups using SaberSim, and we're going to see if we can't make heads or tails of this. First of all, is it possible that all these goalies, at least in the early games, are confirmed? That's 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 uh that's pretty helpful. But first of all, let's take a look at the the layout of the slate, which is what I like to do. Is is a whole bunch of seven o'clock games, and then a seven thirty, and then this this basically this late slate. You know, starting with uh, Edmonton going all the way through to the end. So it's a war, you know, and. It's it's definitely a slate where after these seven o'clock games get rolling, you're going to want to do some late swapping um, to the to the later games. So listen, you have plenty of time, and you also have enough time to really get a sense for what's happening. So uh, I would do a late swap before the Edmonton game, and I would do another late swap before these ten o'clock games start. The other thing I like to look at, and again, this is an enormous slate. But just to give you – try to see if there's any team that stands out as far as team totals go. So the, again, we're going to see what the projections say in a minute, but I think it's healthy to, to figure out in advance what you think the projections might say about what teams might be good plays. So see Carolina 3.7, Florida 3.6, Edmonton 3.8. Then you see Vancouver standing out at 4.1 and Tampa at 4.5. Uh, and the other thing about the the these two games, the 4.1 and the 4.5, is that they're big goal differentials. So it's 1.7 and 2.2. And I, I'm starting to really embrace that idea because when when you rate to be up a goal or two, it opens up this this empty net risk as well, which just which just increases your 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 upside. So uh, whenever you have this situation where someone's not only as a, as a high goal scoring, you know, a high uh, implied goal score, but also the other team like rates to even not even keep up, it just increases the possibility for, for that empty net situation. Um, so you have Edmonton, for example, 3.8 and a 1.3 goal in, uh, gap. But then you have this Tampa 4.5 with a two goal gap. And Vancouver, 4.1 with a 1.7 goal gap. Those, those are pretty good plays. And they have the, the, the uh, added benefit of being late um, so that you can late swap into them. You can screw around with them. You could delay if, if that's what you wanted to do. Okay. Next thing I want to do is take a look at just the overall sheets. And, and, and just, uh, again, I don't share these too often, but when I do the videos, I, I, I like to do it. And this is available on TrueDFS. Uh, these are my, you know, my projections and and uh, ownership projections and things like that. And here's my sheets value score, which is you know my way of combining both fantasy points and points per dollar. Um, and this is the way I like to rank them, kind of right off the bat. And these are the the observations that I get when I just first look at this. Okay. First observation is that you have these two players, Kucherov and Kachuk, which rate significantly higher than everybody else. Um, so that's that has to be respected, you know. 
So if you can get those guys in somehow, that'd be really nice. Um, the other thing that I notice is that there's no, well, I shouldn't say that. There's one kind of pretty good cheapo that's standing out, and that would be Andreas and Athanasio, whatever you pronounce it. So him, you know, if he makes the rest of your lineups work, um, is somebody to consider, just kind of as a one-off punt. So the other thing I'll notice is that in addition to Kucherov being the best player on the slate, his line mates also rate really strongly. And this is kind of what you're looking for when you're analyzing these guys and Braden points. So if you can get in one, two, three, four of these Tampa guys somehow within the salary constraints, probably going to be doing pretty well. Um, I guess the next thing I'll notice, I'm looking at this for the first time here. Well, first of all, Kachuk, Let's see if there's anybody on Kachuk's line. So Stutzel is there. Stutzel, so that's fine. Um, then I see a couple of Floridas bunched up here. But overall, I, I don't see anybody, any team really standing out as being like really good value that are bunched together here. Um, like on the same line, all rating well or whatever. So it's going to be one of those slates where if you're going to build by hand, you would probably just try to play those Tampas and just try to make it work somehow. But on a slate like this, I really do think you're going to want to have Saberson kind of help you here. The other thing I do like to look at uh, is the stack layout. And this basically puts all these projections kind of together in a stack format. And I like to look at these rated three different ways. First is by just raw overall projected points. And here you'll see that Edmonton is the highest. Um, I imagine the fact that they're not that highly owned is going to be because they're very difficult to get to. We'll see. When we rate the stats by points per dollar, it's more Chicago. And, and that makes sense because you have this Anastasio guy who's really, really cheap then San Jose, and then Tampa. And then we rated my modified stack, which is a combination of these two. Then Tampa becomes number one. So you have Tampa uh, rating really well, both value and modified value. And then Edmonton is for raw, raw points. So those are the, 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 the teams you can get, you know, that if you can get to them, it would be great. And the other thing I like to look at is from these value stacks, you know, these probably can end up being good secondary options. Like if you want to play Tampa, you get the Chicago cheapos or the San Jose cheapos or something like that. So what I'll sometimes do is I will just start by doing the hand build lineup. Um, so let's, let's, let's go ahead and do that um, here. The, yeah. So let's just say that I wanted to try to get those Tampa guys in. Brandon Point. Who else did I say? Kucherov, Stamkos. Who was the other one? Let's take another look. Yeah, I just forget. Kucherov, Stamkos, oh, Hedman. Right. Hedman and Points. So if we did want to do this, Comes pretty and pretty difficult, but I mean the thing is you have like a whole bunch of games you can choose from. So, like, if you wanted to go for a cheap goalie, which is what I like to start with, let's take a look. Um, like, who's the cheapest goalie that rates well? So eighty five hundred is going to be too much for this purposes of this. Um, eighty two hundred, eighty three hundred. Wow, this is not a lot of fun. You usually, find someone good at seven k. But you're not seeing it right now. Let's let's put in Logan Thompson just to have somebody, I guess, at 8,100, and let's see if we can even build here. So, boy, 3K a man is rough business. But I know where we're going to have to start, right? We're going to have to start with that dude, that Anastasios, right? The Athanasios. So if we do that, 
then you're at 3K a man, and then you're probably just going to go straight into here and sort by points per dollar and see what you can come up with. Well, one thing, I mean, you do have Donato, the same Chicago. It's on the second power play line. That's that's really, it's really asking for it. This one's sort of interesting. If you want to play another Tampa guy, I just hope they switch the lines up from time to time. You can get the Ace Mont in here. Um, so that would be sort of interesting. Or you could, if you want to be a little, you know, greedy, you can play Braden Shen. I say greedy because at least you know that he's going to be on the first line, the first power play line, and he's only 3,900. So he's a decent one off. So it's tough. I mean, it, that's why it's tough to hand build. And that's why, you know, tools like Saberson just kind of exist. So let's let's take a look. Uh, let, let's see what we, we'd come up with. So again, the first thing you'd want to do is if you want to use Saberson's projections. You want to use your own. It, it, you know, doesn't matter for the purposes of this um, exercise. But somebody playing 40 lineups We'll, we'll put 40 in here. Actually, we'll put 41 because I'm actually playing 41 lineups if I don't do the same lineup in the big buy. -in. And we'll build, you know what? Let's let's build the whole thing. Let's build, let's build 5,000. I mean, we're not going to use them all, but may as well, as long as it's going to build them and it's going to do it in like a minute, right? Uh, you may as well have as many to choose from. The only thing that, that, that you have to worry about when you build 5,000 is that when you start filtering and making rules and, and saying that you want certain things, it's going to be easy for them to give those lineups to you because you have 5,000 to choose from. But the question is, do you really want to play the 4,999th lineup? You know what I mean? So you could make the argument that you might be better off pairing your lineups down to more like, I don't know, a thousand, maybe. Um, and there's certainly something to be said to that. So we're going to look at these from just a straight Sabre score perspective, and then we're going to uh, do some tweaking, and then we're going to do a contest. All right, so when we look at it right now without doing anything, uh, first of all, it's important to know what we're looking at, and as you see, by the way, and the aforementioned Astanasios and all those Tampas, and there you have it, right? Uh, hey, so who needs a uh, saber I could have done this by hand, probably. Um, do you, you want to play a guy from the number four even strength line? Eeks, uh, and no power play? I don't know, but I'm not worried too much about that. But I guess it's important to see what we're looking at here, so it's ranking these by Sabre score and it's specifically ranking them by the large slate defaults, which is what this is, a large slate. And when you click on the eyeball, it'll tell you what this formula is. And I can tell you what this means is that it does overweight the, the 95th percentile outcome because this is percentile 0.95. And then it subtracts the, um, the average adjusted ownership, which um, again, it tries to make upside lineups without playing the highest owned, uh, own players and striking that balance is difficult for a human. So, you know, you have computers and algorithms that will do that for you. Uh, the other thing I'd like to look at just for, again, for analysis is what types of teams you would get by default and what types of stacks in general. So first of all, under stack exposures, you'd be getting 43% of your lineups would be five twos, 24% five zeros, 14% six zeros, and then four threes and a couple of these, you know, kind of, I see non-traditional stacks. Um, and it's up to you whether you want to just say, you know, Saber Sim, just do your thing. And if it likes these stacks for all the reasons it's supposed to like them, just go with them. Or if you're kind of stubborn and OCD and you don't want to want to see these five zeros and four twos or whatever, you could X them out. And just for the purposes of this let, we will X them out. So we're going to X out the four twos and the four two twos and the five zeros. And we'll just leave in five twos, sixes, 
and four threes. Uh, they're giving us some three two twos, so we're gonna go to those. All right, uh, next thing I'll look at is what teams we'd be getting to. And it would be getting 85% Tampa, which, yeah, listen, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, I'm definitely not surprised. And what's kind of cool is, you, you know, you're going to be cashing for zero for like quite a long time. And the, the other thing that's good about this, by the way, is that if things are not particularly going your way early, you do have some flexibility to screw around. You know, and and swap into some Vancouver, uh, some Vegas guys, or some Vancouver guys, or even if you're a little nervous earlier, into some Edmonton guys. So, getting really overweight on on, on Tampa is not so bad because you you might not even get to be that overweight at the end of the day. Um, and the other thing that you can consider doing, and this is before even run contest sims, is changing this min uniques number. And and what this will do. Well, this will do a couple of things. Number one is that it will get you more diversity in your lineups. It's not going to uh, allow lineups that only have one difference between them. However, what that will also do is not give you your top 40, you know, rated by Sabre School. You know, it's going to give you a different ranking. So with every, with every, you know, push, there's a pull. So with more diversity, you get a little more, I will say more risk, but you, know, you give up some projection equity. So, uh, so to show you what you would do, you just go to Min Uniques 2, for example, and then you get a little more uh, diversity in your lineups. Okay, And how much do you do? I mean, it's, it's just up in the air. I mean, you could go all the way down to the amount of Min Uniques where they won't let you anymore, you know, and then then do it that way. Um, it just depends on your your, your risk tolerance and, and, and how confident you are. Um, the more confident you are and the more risk tolerance you have, you, the less min uniques you're going to ask for. Okay. Uh, next thing we're going to do, we'll, we'll save these to my contest for now. Just, just, just for, for a second. And the reason I like to do that is so that this will show up. And what this will allow you to do is to set up your contest sim settings. So, it automatically populates the contest size of the tournament you're entering, the percent, you know, uh, payout to first, percent entries paid and the number of sims you want to run. And then it gives you this choice of which field of lineups to um, uh, compare your lineups to to figure out your expected ROI. And in and, and this one, if you pick Sabre Sim Ownership, it's going to compare your lineups to bunch of lineups that the Sabre Sim ownership numbers uh, imply. Um, but what I like to do is instead just, listen, I built 5,000 lineups based on decent projections anyway. We're just going to use those, build one as my target. You know, th those are the field of lineups I'm going to compare mine to to figure out which ones rate to be the highest, you know, risk-adjusted ROI against them. So after we do that, we click Run Contest Sims, and it you know, it, it's running the, you know, however many simulations of the slate. And after it does that, it's going to allow you to re-rank your, 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 your lineups based on how they're going to do against the rest of the field. Not just how they're going to do on a raw basis, but how they're going to do given the fact that other people are likely to play X, Y, Z. So this should be uh, done in a second. And then what we'll do is now that it's done, we will click on this drop down and go to these two two uh two things we look at. So first let's look to the Thursday night ice, which is the big is the big buy-in. Uh and we'll click risk adjusted ROI. And it is going to list the top rated lineup given, you know, uh your risk adjusted ROI against the field of lineups that you are, you know, those, those 5,000 lineups. So what we'd be getting, I mean, if you care, I mean, our, our six uh, Tampa's fully stacked and then a couple of random one-offs. And what's, what's okay about this is if you'll notice, I think none of these games start before like nine o'clock. 
So we're going to be able to see what all this, what all, what's happening here before we have to late swap, before we have to screw around, and we will have the ability to update our projections later in the slate uh, for to accommodate line changes, you know, and things like that, and late injury news. So these types of builds are very, very healthy. Um, so we're, we're going to start by, by saving this one to the Thursday Night Ice. Now let's again, let's go then also look at the kick save, which is the MME kind of lottery. And I imagine this is going to be somewhat different, and it is. Okay. So why is this different? Well, I mean, when you're trying to beat, you know, 50,000, you know, 20, you know, 10,000 people, you know, you're not just going to play the chalkiest best performer. You're going to realize that other people are going to play that also and play less of it. Now, with that said, we're still getting a full 29% tamp, okay, which is fine. Let's take a look at stack exposure. A um, couple of, of, of stray violators, stack rules. And then again, we want to figure out, do we want to go min uniques one? Maybe let's go min uniques two. Seems reasonable enough. And we're still getting Tampa, but now we're getting a little more exposure out of these earlier games. Uh, but in, but even still, Montreal. Now this is this is pretty contrary, you know. Um, and it's a 10 o'clock game. I think this is all pretty healthy. So we'll go ahead and we'll just fire these. Kick save, save, and Sabersim is going to remember in this contest tab what you played so that if you come in late swap, you know, it'll just remember and you can just go into the late swap tab. So we will correct our entries there. And we are now off to the races. And that is it. And that's the process that I use and the process I will use uh, once, you know, projections update and things like that. And again, you know, if you get builds where you get like a lot of these late games, I think that's a very, very good. Um, and I wouldn't mess with them at all. And that should do it. Good luck, everybody.